It's all about Herman Melville's fictional pulpit. You'll find it at the Siemens Bethel, a non-denominational church in New Bedford. It's part of the New Bedford Whaling National Historical Park. It was a beautiful day, the day that we visited. We started our tour downstairs. It's called the Old Salt Box, so named of yore by whalers blunt on trips ashore. The Old Salt Box, preserving place for men redeemed of every race. The task of getting the whalemen into the schoolroom was not easy. You see, a lot of them were illiterate. They needed to take classes on reading, writing, arithmetic, and navigational skills. The men would have to admit that they were not literate. Not an easy task for adults even today. In addition, there were many other choices whalemen can make regarding the time they spent on shore. But one way to get these guys downstairs into this classroom, the schoolroom, was to call it a salt box. And this is a term that the whalemen were familiar with since the salt box was an area located just beneath the decks of the ship in which the salted meat was stored. So this gave them an out. There were plenty of displays with all types of photographs and documents about the whaling industry. But a lot of this is about Herman Melville. You'll have to wait a minute before I get to Herman Melville. This small organ was placed in a wheelbarrow and wheeled down to the waterfront, a tradition that has continued today every Memorial Day. That would be cool to see, wouldn't it? As we were walking upstairs to see the main chapel, we read this sign, In memory of Captain George Fred Tilton, 1861 to 1932, whaleman, who in 1897 walked 3,000 miles through Alaskan winter to save the lives of 200 men on four whale ships caught in Arctic ice. Wow, that guy is a hero, isn't he? Once upstairs, there is plenty to see, like this clock that was manufactured in nearby Roxbury, Massachusetts. It's sort of a, a small chapel, and if you've never been to a church in New England, you have no idea how uncomfortable these pews are. Have you subscribed yet? If you are a subscriber, I thank you for subscribing. If you're not, please do that now. The tables mounted on the sidewalls, they look a bit like gravestones, don't they? They are called cenotaphs. The word comes from the Greek, and it means empty grave. When a whaleman was lost or buried at sea, family and friends ashore had no grave to visit. If they desired, they could pay to have a cenotaph placed in the whaleman's chapel, and they could come to pay their respects to their loved ones, just as folks would visit a cemetery. And I want to read a couple of them to you. Erected by captain officers and crew of the Bark J.D. Thompson in memory of Isaac Sanders of Newburgh, New York, who died on board January 21, 1857. In memory of Benjamin Franklin, son of Otis Norton and Susan Grinnell Pierce, lost in Ballinus Bay, lower coast of California, February 23rd. 1863. In memory of the men on the Scalloper Navigator, lost at sea November 30th, 1977. Current time, guys. But here's what you've been waiting to see. The pulpit. Herman Melville's pulpit. It's a curious thing, and here's the backstory. It was in Moby Dick. Herman Melville wrote three chapters about this seaman's Bethel, and in that, there was one element that helped make the Wellman's Chapel famous. Yet, get this, it is a result of Melville's imagination. When Melville writes of the Wellman's Chapel, he describes the pulpit as being suggestive of the front of a ship. But the pulpit, when he visited, was not prow-shaped. In all probability, it was a typical New England box-style pulpit. The pulpit in the Wellman's Chapel today, here's another twist, is not due to Melville's book, but to the movie, which was released in 1956. The director of the movie, John Huston, was an Irishman, and he went to Ireland to film the movie. The pulpit scene in the movie is unmistakably the prow of a ship. When the movie was released, it was hugely successful, and, and one result was that Americans wanted to visit New Bedford to see the Seaman's Bethel with that pulpit in the Wellman's Chapel. The only problem was they arrived expecting to see something that did not exist, and they were not happy to discover an ordinary pulpit in the chapel. The new pulpit was first seen by visitors in 1961, and since the pulpit met expectations, the grumbling stopped. The pulpit remains today, and visitors always refer to the movie and novel Moby Dick when they see it in person. A couple other things about Melville, particularly. There are 43 pews total in the Siemens Bethel, one being famously marked with the plaque, Herman Melville's Pew. 
From what we know, Melville liked to sit in the same pew every visit he made to the Bethel. Visitors from all over the world come in and sit and take a picture in the famous pew. This display included some wood that was from the foundation of this structure. It was loaded with termites, and fortunately, it was caught in time, and they were able to save this tremendous bit of American history. This plaque erected in recognition of Herman Melville, 1819 to 1891. That's kind of neat as numbers reverse each other, 1991. Seaman extraordinary, whose voyages lured him across the stormiest of all seas within the heart of man, where he discerned the primordial beauty and terror of this world and the danger-ridden labors of the whalemen, and told the story of it with undismissed glory in that immortal saga of the sea, Moby Dick. And I like this quote of his the best. It is not down on any map. True places never are. Herman Melville, Moby Dick, 1851. Flip-flops on the ground. Unclassic road trip. Be sure to subscribe and comment below. Thank you.